Hello world, today I'm going to show you how to filter a table based on the contents of its cells using jQuery. How this is going to work is it's going to have a series of radio buttons for the controls for the user. And anytime the user clicks on a radio button, it'll change which rows in the table displays. Here you see we have two radio buttons checked, no filter for A or B, no filter for Y or Z. And so there's no filter applied to this table at all. But if we click the has B radio button, only the rows of the table that contain a B will show. Show. And likewise, if we click the has Z radio button, it also works for has A and has Y. Let's look at the source code of our web page. In the body of our web page, we're going to have six input values of type radio. The first three inputs will have a name attribute of filter 1. The second three inputs have a name attribute of filter 2. Each of the value of the radio button inputs will be based on the way that we're going to filter the table. So for our first radio button input, we'll have a value of A. second one will have a value of B. The third one will have a value of all A and B with no spaces, just using underscores. Our fourth radio button will have a value of Y, our fifth will have a value of Z, and our sixth radio button will have a value of all Y, Z. Let's look at the table of our web page. Each row in the table is going to have a series of classes. And these classes are going to correspond with the values of the radio button inputs that we just defined. The header of our table will have all of the values as classes, each class separated by a space. This will ensure that no matter what radio button that we have selected for our filter, the header will always stay displayed. Each of the rows will always have all A, B, and also the all Y, Z classes. This will ensure that they do not disappear when we do not have any filters set. Then we add classes that correspond to the content of the cells in the row. If we have an A in the cell, then the row is going to have a class of A. Likewise, with a cell that has a value of B, it will also have a class of B. And the same for Y and Z. Let's look at the style section of the header of our web page. Here we're going to define how our table looks. The most important thing here is that we define how our header cells and our body cells appear. We're going to set them to a width of 80 pixels. You can set this width to whatever you want. This will ensure that each of the cells in the columns will appear the same width, no matter which cells are displaying. And the header will also have our JavaScript. We're going to include the jQuery library. Here we're using Google's jQuery. Then we're going to define our own custom jQuery between a pair of script tags. The first thing we're going to want to do in our JavaScript here is add event listeners to our radio button inputs. Here we're grabbing the inputs that have the name attribute of filter 1 and filter 2 and we're adding an event to them. The event we're going to be listening to is whenever one of the radio buttons changes. Anytime one of the radio buttons changes values we're going to execute a function called G. Now let's define the function G. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab all the table rows that appear in the web page. Then we're going to change the CSS attribute for those rows to display none so every single one of them is invisible by default. Then our next two lines of code we're going to turn on the rows that we want to have displayed. We're going to do this by looking for the classes that are checked in each of the radio buttons. So we're looking for the checked value for the series of radio buttons with the name of filter 1 and also doing the same thing for filter 2. And then we're changing the CSS attribute to display block so that the desired rows appear back onto the web page. And that's all there is to it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.